This is King Davis with David and Goliath Music Beatclass.com. And I want to introduce you to organizing your vocal mixes. Now, organizing a vocal mix is super important when you're doing a professional production, especially if you're doing something for a signed artist or, um, or a record label. The organization of your work means everything. Have you ever lived in a house that's messy? Do you kind of feel a little bit messy yourself? And then when you clean the house, you, you tend to feel better? Well, music production uh, has the same kind of principles at work. In other words, the more organized your productions are, the more organized you feel and more in control of the final product that you feel as a music producer. So what I'm going to do is fine-tune and actually hone in on a hook to a vocal track that I'm working with. I'm going to explain just some basic concepts and hopefully you can apply this to your productions and become a much more organized producer which will probably lead you to more production work and better produ productions in the long run. So let's go ahead and play the hook. Here it is. I must be your destiny. All right, so we have many different parts here. It's a pretty big chorus, okay? First thing uh, that we want to do to try and organize our choruses is probably uh, click on the track that we recorded our vocals to and give it a color code. So we're going to right click, right? We could always set an icon if we want to, uh, but most of the time what I would do is just name it. So I'd left click on rename. Uh, and then there's going to be a dialog box that will come up and allow you to give it a name. So let's just name that um, lead vocals and chorus. Right? Then let's go ahead and left click. Now many of you people know how to do this already. However, it's not just what you know, it's what you practice that makes it work. Okay? Just consider yourself Michael Jordan and you know how to hit a three pointer. But if you don't practice it every day, you become rusty. So much of what you must do doesn't depend on what you know about music production. It depends on what you practice daily. Okay? So, again, we're going to go and do, ahead and do this. This is actually a backing vocal. Uh, mm -hmm. Track 6 is a backing vocal. So I'm going to name it Backing Chorus. B-A-C-K-I-N-G Chorus. And then we'll give it a color. All right? Now, this plus button here... Uh, on your color design allows you to pick primary colors. Uh, this gives you a f more fuller spectrum. If you're doing larger production, you'll need much more variety of colors. I would hit that plus button and then pick a primary color. Hit OK and enter. And that really begins to color your production. Then you can really see and say, ah, that's where my background chorus was. Right? The other thing you could do is go to the wave itself and le left click on uh, what looks to be an arrow. I'm going to make it bigger so you can see it. On any audio wave, there's looks like a little arrow. And you left click on that and pull down and then you can actually preview that sound. I must be your destiny. Okay. So that gives you an idea of number 1 what it was that you recorded. And if you didn't name it, then you want to go ahead and name it in your track list here. Okay, so we have many different vocals here. We've got uh, countless background vocals. I count here about uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 um, tracks of vocals. So that's a lot of vocals. So what we would do is color code that. Uh, we would give everything a name so that we know exactly what is what. A lot of times when you're working with uh, record labels, um, they ask you questions about, well, uh, can we take out just that vocal? Can we add that vocal? So forth. A lot of times you may also produce for a group or an artist, and that won't be the final vocals. But if you have an organized vocal production, then you can assign each artist that you're working with a particular vocal, uh, if that should make sense to you. Okay? So keeping your productions organized helps you in translating that to a record label or to a signed artist 
or to uh, whatever artist that you're working with. Um, and this way you're not fumbling around. You look so much more professional and you actually will have a better time putting together your production. Okay, so the next rule that I would stick by, now these are not hard, fast rules. These are just the rules that I play by and it's worked for me so far um, in over, gosh, I've been in the music business uh, you know, over 25 years. So it's worked for me, so I'll show you how to do it. All right, so the next thing I do is keep a tight group. What do I mean by that? I keep my vocals close together uh, in the output mixer. So in other words, most of my vocals will be between the range of uh, output 20 to maybe 22. I group them based on whatever their function is, okay? For instance, I'm going to play just a portion of the chorus, and you'll see exactly what I mean. Okay, so the end portion here, if I go to my select tool, and I select just the final portion of the hook and play it, All right, that's one background for me on reason for the song. Go you are my destiny. All right, so now we can hear that there are different background vocals on each part. Go you turn me on reason for the song. And we can hear the words on song. Now, why did I put those out a, a separate effect and not just put all of the vocals through one main effect and pan them left and right? Okay, well, I wanted to have different effects on different portions of the chorus. This makes for a much fuller chorus, number one. Uh, number two, it allows me to put a separate EQ and give it a different filter so that each part sounds different. Now, let's listen to the main vocals, which is going through insert 20. Girl, you turn me on, reason for the song. Girl, you are the destiny. And you hear all those harmonies? Now let's listen to insert 21. Let's see what that does. Alright, so you hear the difference. Insert 20 are all my main vocals on the chorus. Insert 21 are my lower uh, harmony. In other words, my octave down below. Girl, you turn me on. Okay, this allows me greater control over my mix and a vocal mix is just like creating a, a song right it's considered a separate production so you have your music production and then you have the vocal production and when you put those together it makes this big mass sound okay so now what was rule number one rule number one is to label everything and possibly color everything rule number two separate and keep them separate them but keep them in a tight group in other words keep my groups within the same range so that I'm not having to go from one side of my mixer to the other side of my mixers to find vocals okay and now let's add this with a final rule that we can follow to make great vocal productions okay the other thing is make sure that you create a submix on your vocals so that they stand out separate from your music okay how do we do that there's a function called the send in most mixers. Now this is true of any music production mixing board. Uh, it's not only true just for FL Studio. And this send allows you to create what's called a sub mix or a mix within a mix. Okay. What you'll do is come to the channel where you want to use or create a sub mix. And then you'll choose a send channel that you want to send this mix through. You go to the uh, the send one button, and you turn it up as much as you would like it to, and then add the particular effects that you would like on that subgroup or that submix. Okay, you can then send all of your vocals through that submix. It's like sending uh, the vocals through a separate pipeline, just like in a house you have different pipes. Okay, you have a sewage pipe, and then you have uh, a, a drinking pipe. Well, you certainly don't want the sewage and the drinking pipe to be the same right so this is a similar concept you're mixing through two separate uh, th through through different pipes uh, what makes it different for each vocal track and again let me explain that concept uh, a little bit more deeply 
when you're mixing through two separate pipes in other words your music is going down one pipe and your vocals are going down another right so you have two separate mixes or sub mixes or a mix within a mix okay and then you mix the overall song down to create a, a final mix so there we go we have our sub mix we're going to use uh, insert send number one what I did was I put a multiband compressor on that and I begin to equalize it based on the frequencies that I wanted to have stand out in the mix All right. lastly I put a gate on it so that when there was no sound or in in between silence moments the track will be completely silent okay then insert 20 uh, I gave it much more send in other words this controls or this knob here which is called my send button uh, gives me the control as to how much signal I want to go through this particular send. Um, I gave it a lot. I gave it about 99 or 98 percent. And then insert 2, I gave it a little bit less. I gave it 84 percent. And insert 22, I gave it even less than that. I gave it about 36 percent. So now we have all these layers and textures and different amounts of effects on different subgroups of vocals. Now when we add the music all together, uh, we'll hear a complete mix that will sound very, very full, very rich, and very interesting. This is probably some of the missing link that many of you are trying to achieve with your music. Um, and it's not so much about what you know. It's really about what you practice. Okay? Again, let's use the whole Michael Jordan analogy. Michael Jordan wasn't great because he knew how to hit a three-pointer. He was great because he practiced hitting three-pointers. All right, so once you learn something, make sure that it's something that you apply every day. Otherwise, you will lose it. That is the secret that everybody uh, seems to be wanting to learn how to do. And really, that's something you don't learn. It's something that you do. Okay, so let's play the mix with the music, and let's see how it sounds. You ready? That is how you organize a chorus production or a vocal production using FL Studio or any production tool that you might use. Okay? And I hope that everyone does well with their music. Keep making music, never stop, and remember to apply these techniques daily. Okay. David, David Wise Music, Peace.